I saw him standing in the parking lot, and I saw him popping people off. I was inside the produce department, which is right by the front door, and I saw him popping people off, and I was like, you know, this is crazy. So in, to deter him, I started just chunking bottles. I just started throwing bottle, random bottles at him. And I'm not a baseball player, so one went this way and one went that way. And then one went right towards him, and then that's when he saw me and just started. And I ducked and started. I was behind the chips, and so I ducked, and he just boop, 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 started firing off rounds at me. And I was like, oh, my God, this guy's shooting at me. And then so when I got hit, it was like, it was like somebody put a hand grenade in your back and pulled the pin. That's basically what it felt like. Felt like. And then so I was like, oh my God, I gotta get up, I gotta get up, get up, get up, get up. And then so he walked to the bank, <clears throat> which was right by the restrooms, and just randomly started, I mean, people were praying in Spanish, por favor, no, no, por favor, no. And he was just, they were on the ground and he still just shot him in the head. I mean, they were praying in Spanish. I mean, I'm from El Paso and I know Spanish and they were praying, please, please don't shoot me. And he had no remorse for their lives at all. Could you see his face? Could you see yes, his eyes? Yes, he was a tall guy, brown hair, khaki pants. He had, I'm an avid shooter, so he had shooting glasses on. and. I could just tell he was prepared. And I saw this and I was like, excuse me. And I said, look, do something. And I was telling people, I said, I was like, we gotta, and it, it was just so random because in this town, not everybody knows English and there's nothing wrong with that. But everybody's like, get down, get down. And there was people walking around either in awe. Hold on a second. Or just didn't hey, understand. How are you feeling right now? You all right? If I throw up on you, that means I like you. All right. I'll take it. But I just but, want to make sure yeah, you I'm feel fine. all right. You're okay? I'm fine. I just get nauseous. And when I ran through the Walmart, I kind of smingled around through the paint department. And then I finally found the auto department. And so I ran through the auto department door. And there was Donna, my guardian angel. And she's a federal agent. CPP. And I said, there's a shooter inside, Code Brown. My dad was in the military. And so that means there's a shooter inside. So she's like, get down, get down. And she went to work and did her job and patched me up and took me to shelter and covered me and just did all these things that, you know, she was paid to do. That was her job. You know, she didn't, she said, and, and she said the same thing my mom said. I'm going to Walmart. I don't need my firearm. And so she didn't have her gun with her. She'll be a friend for life because she, I honestly, honestly think she saved my life. I really do. Because she was there for me and she never, she never left my sight. And she called everybody and before you know it, she threw me in the back of a random pickup truck who happened to be a police officer. And she said, get this guy to the ambulance. And, and she was like my guardian angel, I'll never, I'll forever be indebted to her because I honestly think she saved my life. And I don't mean to be a sissy and cry, I'm sorry. But from the There's time- There's nothing weak about crying after what you've been through the time, that you can feel. I'm just, I'm just sorry. From the time I got out of the ambulance to the time I got in here, it was like, wow. These people know what the hell they're doing. So what do you make of all this? What you just you know lived what? through, what you did in that moment, and why I, somebody was there to do this to you. I believe in God. I'm a firm believer in God. But I don't think I deserve to live like those, some of those children deserve to die. I really don't. Why? Because it's just not fair. It's not fair. I mean, one, one little girl saw her parents get killed right in front of her. I mean... Why would you kill an innocent child? Why would you do that? One in your sick mind would say, hey, I'm going to go kill a couple of innocent children today. Hate. I mean, but how much hate do you have to have in your heart to do that? And then to come to find out from what I heard earlier that, 
oh, he had a vendetta against Mexicans. Mexicans are some of the most big-hearted people in your entire life. If you've ever spent any time in this town, anybody here would help you that they didn't, you didn't even know them. I mean, this is such a great, great, great city. It's a beautiful city. And the people here are the most genuine, kind-hearted people you have ever seen in your entire life. Are you able to appreciate at all that you did something amazing? No, I'm not. You saw this man I firing at people, and you threw things at him to get his attention, and knowing that he was then going to fire at you. I think, you could have just I run think away. a lot of men would have done that. But what does it say about you that you did it? It says that my father raised me that way. My father raised me to help people. He was in the Air Force, and he was a great man. If I could be half the man that my dad was, then I'd be a great man too, but I'm not. I gotta disagree I just, with you, pal. I just want to be half the man he is. That's all. I can't believe that anybody well, who loves disagree. you wouldn't be proud. I mean, what I just, you did, Chris. I don't I'm telling think you. that people. I can't believe people just. I mean, we're men, man. You know, that's what men do, right? That's what some they men do. They help people. You signify what we are at our best in the worst moment. And there's so many who owe you the regretted attitude. Oh, I won't, I won't accept it because I just, I did what any good man would have done. That's all. I mean, that's it. I can't take credit for anything because 21 pe 22 people died. You know, if I would, if I could trade my life for that little girl's life that I saw kill, I would do it in a second. I would do it in a second because she had her whole life ahead of her. She was there buying, she had school supplies. I'm 50 years old. My life's almost over, so I would have traded my life for that life any day of the week. Any day of the week. And I should hope that in our society that people are here to protect each other, man. Well, that's what you were there for. That's I mean, what you did. we're all here to protect each other. We're all here to save each other and, and to, to just be decent people. Guardian Angel. There she is. There she is. Miss America. <laughs> How are you? Hi. This is my Guardian Angel, Donna. Boy, has yeah. he been talking you up. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a hell of an event. Oh, you, you are you are an amazing, amazing person. You know that? Thank you. You did your job, and you did your job very well. And you, there was no hesitation. You knew exactly what to do, and I honestly think that you saved my life. I do. I'm just I'm happy I was there I for do. you. I really do think that. Because if you weren't there, I would have, who knows what would have happened. I mean, you did everything that you were trained to do. Thank and you. you called, she called my mom. I mean, she did everything. It was just absolutely amazing. What did you think when he came running up to you and told you what was going on? Um, you know, I mean, we heard the gunshots happening. Um, we were trying to get as many people as we could out. Um, and then um, we were able to get an, an old lady out. Um, she didn't know what was going on. We put her behind a tree. We went back inside. Um, we found Chris. Um, we were able to get him outside. Um, there were two Walmart employees that were absolutely, um, yeah, phenomenal. Um, they, they, we grabbed um, as many um, first aid kits, um, paper towels. Um, you know, everybody applied paper towels to him just to try to stop the bleeding. Um, we actually ducked down between two vehicles on the, on the northeast side of Walmart, um, told him to, to be quiet because um, we oh, didn't know if the shoe was Well, that's no easy task with you, yeah. by the way. So, that's the biggest risk to the situation yeah, was you were probably talking said, the whole time. Everything yeah. she said, I did, yeah. and that saved my life. Yeah, and, and it was just, it was, um, um, we were trying to keep him calm. Um, he tried to fade out a couple of times. We just told him, Chris, stay with us. Um, that's when we called his mother. Um, we were able to get the phone number, and, and we called his mom. And, and his mom was actually hiding in, in a container in the back of the store. And um, so um, at that point, um, we knew we couldn't get out. There was another gunshot victim um, a little bit south of us. Um, we ran over there. Um, Did you they, know where the shooter was? No, at that point, we didn't know where the shooter was. Um, we ran over there. Apparently, his uh, driver's side window was shot out. Um, he was uh, clearly shot in the abdomen. There was a female there um, putting pressure on that. Um, they moved him around to the uh, passenger side. 
and they just drove the vehicle out um, to the nearest hospital. Um, I yelled at one of the police officers that was there that we needed an ambulance. The ambulance um, was going to be too far away. It wasn't clear, so he couldn't come in. An off-duty El Paso police officer in, in jean shorts and a, and a bulletproof vest came running. He said, what do we need? We said, we need an ambulance. He was fading. He was losing a lot of blood. Um, out of nowhere, he shows up with a gray truck. They put a blanket down. We throw Chris in the back of the truck. He takes off, and I stayed on the scene. Are you thinking about what you're dealing with, or were you just in go mode? We were just in go mode. I mean, I, I just did exactly what, what CBP taught me to do. What do you think of the idea of someone who is just a hater, white nationalist, whatever label you want to put on, coming to this place, trying to find people who are brown, who represent something he hates, and doing this in your town? A coward. Just an absolute hateful coward.